Whose milk did Cleopatra bathe in? Hello name nerds, my name is Patrick and welcome to Fun With First Names where each week we're looking to the meaning, origin and some extra fun facts behind one specific first name. And this week we are looking to the first name of Cleo. But before we begin, I just want to mention my Patreon. Now Patreon is the best way to help support Name Explain. I haven't actually got any new patrons recently which is kind of sad, it makes me a little upset but with everything going on in the world right now, I completely understand that fact. You guys support yourselves first. Make sure you've got heating, you've got food, you've got electricity. Make sure you've got all that. However, if you do manage to have some money by the end of the month and want to put it towards a good cause, um, go donate to charity first maybe. But then after that, if you've still got a spare dollar going, consider supporting Names for Patreon. It's, it's a really great thing. It makes me so happy. And you get loads of awesome rewards in return. You get ad-free videos, exclusive content, and a chance to say what names to explain. Not only in these fun with first names videos, but on my Wednesday videos as well. My request Wednesdays are all decided on by patrons too. It's a really great way. I value even just $1 of support. And that's why if you support just $1, you get everything. Like You can support more and you get extra goodies, but $1 grants you all access because I think I think that's worth it. It takes a lot to donate a dollar and I appreciate anyone who does it. Patreon.com forward slash name explain link down below. But anyway, on with today's name of Cleo. And Cleo actually isn't the most common of names, I must admit. However, this name could have been a lot less popular. This name could have potentially fallen into absolute obscurity if it weren't for some ancient Egypt history obsessed nerds. Yep, that is because Cleo, the name we all know today, is simply a shortening of the name Cleopatra. Now, I'm sure you've heard the name Cleopatra before. The most famous Cleopatra being that certain ancient Egyptian pharaoh, you know, the one bathes in goat's milk, dog's milk? Whose milk did Cleopatra bathe in? Snake's milk? Bit by a snake. Shakespeare, Mark Antony. You know who I'm talking about. You know the one. The name Cleopatra simply means the glory of her father and that beginning part of the name, the Cleo part of the name, is the part that means glory. So even to this day, the name Cleo is seen as meaning glory. And of course the Patra part means father, which makes all kinds of sense now that I think about it, like Pater, which is a name for father, patriarchy, papa, all that sort of stuff. It's just, it's quite obviously there if you take a moment to think about it. And while we now see Cleopatra as one of the biggest icons of ancient history, that wasn't always the case. And as popular as ancient Egypt is today as like a subject and like an aesthetic, gosh, an aesthetic, that's a very Gen Z word to say, that wasn't always the case either. Ancient Egyptian history became really popular in the late 18th century all the way into around the mid 20th century. I mean, I know it's still popular and studied now, but it had a real boom period over that 100 plus years. It all began with Napoleon's 1789 campaign of Egypt. And when he went over to Egypt, he brought a bunch of his scientific and historical nerds with him for the ride. It was this big bunch of nerds that Napoleon brought over to the land that recorded and processed and took note of so many ancient Egyptian things. So much we know of ancient Egypt today comes from this initial group of nerds in the land back in 1798. 1789. One of the two. I can't remember. I'm going to check my notes. 89. I think that's one of the ones I said. Fingers crossed. But things really took off in 1822, I know I've got that date right, because it was in this year that the Rosetta Stone was finally deciphered. I'm sure you know the Rosetta Stone. It was this big obelisk that had hieroglyphics on it. It's what allowed us to translate hieroglyphics into English and let us fully understand ancient Egypt. It's still in show in London at the moment. I think I've seen it. That should probably go back, shouldn't it, lads? Yeah, maybe. Maybe give that back to Egypt, maybe. If they want it, if they don't want it, then let's keep it, I suppose. But maybe should go back. But with all this new information about ancient Egypt, it led to a huge surge in public interest on that time period. Ancient Egyptian aesthetic and design became super fashionable too. And this moment in time, not ancient Egypt itself, but this moment from like the late 18th to around the mid 20th century, became known as Egyptomania. That's what a big deal it was. It was like Beatles mania or poker mania, but with ancient Egyptians, they didn't have as much to get overly obsessed in back in the day. There were some big ancient Egyptian stands 
knocking around during this time period. I know how to use modern lingo. I'm on Instagram, name is plain YT. I know how this works. I'm not old and confused. Please, please, I promise you I'm not. This led to ancient Egyptian design being found all over the place in our modern world. And there's some really great examples. Perhaps the most well known of example being the Washington Monument in Washington DC. This is based off an ancient Egyptian obelisk and it, and it shows, look at it. But one of my favorite examples is the Egyptian house in Penzance. So Penzance is a uh, town in Cornwall here in the UK and there's this one house right in the middle of the town which just looks very ancient Egyptian it's really good fun I've, I've been fortunate enough to go see it myself if you're ever in this neck of the woods that neck of the woods go check it out it's quite fun I'd be like huh name explain mentioned that there it is there should be a little blue plaque out there saying name explain mentioned it make me famous god damn it but strange rant aside one of the key figureheads in Egyptomania was of course Cleopatra it was during Egyptomania where she gained her public image, that kind of image she has today, that I guess Shakespeare probably helped a tiny bit as well. And because of her newfound popularity and iconicness, people started to want to use her name for their kids. They wanted to start calling their kids Cleopatra. And while I imagine many did use the full name of Cleopatra, many also just chose Cleo as a first name. This shortening of Cleopatra, of Cleo, that became a first name unto itself. And it was from here that the name Cleo became the well-known or first name that it is today. But what's really fun is there are actually some alternative forms of Cleo and Cleopatra that gained popularity during Egyptomania. They didn't quite take off. These include Cleo Ra and Cleo La, but like I said, these names haven't really stood the test of time. But maybe you should call your kid one of these, you know, get these names going again. So yeah, we have Napoleon's history nerd to thank for pulling this name from obscurity and giving it and the rest of Egypt to the masses. So cheers nerds, you've done some good stuff. I mean, nerds have done a lot of cool stuff, but one of the many things they've done is help form this name Cleo and give it modern popularity. Yeah, Egyptomania, we should bring it back. We should start making things like the ancient Egyptians. Not physically, we shouldn't use slaves um, to physically make things, but the aesthetic's quite cool. But what's interesting is perhaps the other really famous pharaoh from Egyptomania, Tutankhamun. His name never got adapted into a modern popular first name. Little baby Tut, little baby Carmoon, like, if you had to give someone the name Tutankhamun today, that's hard to say Tutankhamun today, if you had to give someone the name Tutankhamun today, what kind of variation would you make? Let me know down in the comments below. Cleo is not currently a particularly popular name. It's 804th in the USA. But saying that, it's actually on the rise. This name has been out of mass popularity for quite some time. It's only in the last couple years or so, it's re-entered the top 1000. Watch this space. I think Cleo is going to become a very popular first name in the next few years. I could see it easily breaking the top 500, maybe top 100 in the USA. Who knows? And it's actually way more popular here in the UK, being the 180th most popular name. So well done. Here, we, we like our Cleos. We're much more into our Egyptomania over there, Lee. Well done us, I suppose. Interestingly enough, two of the most famous Cleos are both jazz singers. This Cleo Lane, who's a British jazz singer, and Cleo Brown, a American jazz singer. But what's interesting about Cleo Brown is her full name was actually Cleopatra. And she was born, I believe, in the early 20th century, 1904, 1905, I think you might have said. So she would have been born towards the tail end of Egyptian. Egyptomania, so she she and her name may very well be, have been a product of Egyptomania, so that's, that's history in action right there. And of course there's the little goldfish in Pinocchio called Cleo too, because that's fun. I think they're making a new version of Cleopatra soon, or Pinocchio soon. They might make a new version of Cleopatra soon, I don't know. Definitely making a new version of Pinocchio soon, two versions I believe. Um, yeah, I, can't, I haven't seen the original in years. Is it terrifying? I presume it's terrifying. But anyway, that's just about everything you guys need about the name Cleo. But what are your thoughts on this name? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you know anyone with the name Cleo? Are you called Cleo yourself? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, I just want to share some of the thought to you guys on last week's name of Chloe. Half I said, the name of the element chlorine derives from the Greek word chloros, meaning yellow green. So yes, this is very true. So that sort of glel, that Indo-Euro, proto-Indo-European word for green I mentioned, also gave us the color of yellow too. They both come from very similar roots, yellow and green. It makes sense because yellow is used to make green. So they all come from similar roots, colors as, Colours are strange things. I mean, 
they're very odd things, but they're, they're very fun things. We should do a video more in depth about colours one day. One day, I promise. Darimo10 said, blame typewriter makers. Since there is no easy way to put diacritics on letters, people don't. Damn straight, darn typewriter creators with their presumption. I'd be interested to know what typewriters look like around the world. Let's say in a language like French, did they make sure to add accents onto their typewriters or not? But no, typewriters, they explain a lot about language. They, they, they were quite influential from like the way the keyboards were set up to the way we use language today. Typewriters, fun things. Glad they're gone because they look like a nightmare to use. And Odin U29 said, we didn't need a diuresis to spell Chloe. Most of us just add it to the list of words in English that make their own sense. Rules are for suckers. Darn straight rules are for suckers. I just like that sentiment of rules are for suckers because Rules are made to be broken, I guess. That's what I'd like to say. No, rules are made to be strictly adhered to and respected. Nah, no, but rules are for suckers, so clearly I'm a bit of a sucker on that front. Go suggest some names down in the comments below, and I'll pick three of them to be put into a poll exclusively for my patrons to vote on. And then the winning name will be the name covered in the next Fun With First Names video. So if you enjoyed the channel, want to help support it, and have a say in what names I explained, please do consider becoming a patron. Like I said, guys, times are tough at the moment. I don't expect anyone to become a patron and you can enjoy these videos in this current state forever without anything changing. Like I'm not gonna be hiding any of these videos behind a paywall. But if you do enjoy the channel enough and have the funds to help financially support it, even just a dollar a month, that would be amazing because, you know, it, <laughs> It just would help, like it helps in the best way. It helps keep the lights on here, helps keep the channel going. It helps, I'm, I'm really hot and I've got a really sore throat. So just listen to me ramble on about this in a previous video and you get the gist. But anyway, that's enough from myself. Don't forget to go follow me on Instagram where name explain YT and don't forget to go join the Facebook group of friends on name explain. Okay guys, take care. got a bit of a sore throat at the moment if you've been following my Instagram story, so I sound a bit more gravelly than normal. The name Cleo is simply seen as mean, good mean. So again. And when Napoleon's well, conquest campaign, it was this, I'm gonna say again. It was this bunch of historic, it was this bunch of the ancient Egypt, Egypt? Well, what am I saying here? Oh, I've got to check popularity. I almost feel like the popularity again. But anyway, that's more than enough of myself, evidently. What do I say at this point? <laughs>